Good morning um, to the, today's uh, public lecturing. Um, here I am as a moderator. I'm Ajab Tukajirayez Kwanai from Ipera in Rwanda. I'm the deputy representative of student chapter in Ipera in Rwanda. So today we do have our public lecturing where we do, will be with, uh, with Christian. And uh, our topic is the impact of electronic currency on the economy of the developing countries. So as a subtopic is, should Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies be encouraged or banned? Um, we are living in a life of digital improvement and uh, people have been struggling with uh, this development. So uh, as mainly we are an economic research institution, um, we've been trying to see the whole debate, what people do think, and uh, what could be helping in coming days. So um, as we are just still waiting for others, like in five minutes, I would uh, just try to clarify some, 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 some regulations. Um, the, present, the presenter of today is called Christian Babazi. Um, he will present himself, of course, and uh, other guidelines are if ever, after the presentation, you have a question, um, while you will be presenting, you can write your question in the chat box. Or after the presentation, for the one who will be having that hot question by which he would like to raise, um, he may raise his hand. Um, I think this Zoom has uh, this option of, of raising hands. So if ever if you have that uh, burning question, you will raise your hands and we give you the flow to for you to ask if ever you have a, such kind of a question so uh, i would ask for other for few minutes to wait to see if the number may raise a little bit and uh, and start um, our our today's uh, lecturing so please be patient for these 3 minutes to come i uh, will start at 3 past 10 so thank you very much. Yes, um, as long as uh, we want to be on time and uh, we don't want just to delay that much, uh, I've been thinking if we may start. So firstly, I would like to thank everyone who is uh, participating and maybe the other who will be joining us. Uh, thank you for, for responding to our calls uh, for this uh, public lecturing. So as you have seen, this is an organ. It's an event uh, which is organized by EPR in Rwanda. Uh, it's done monthly. It may happen twice or once, but uh, it's a public lecturing which happen each month. It's in the department of of uh, student chapter uh, in order to enrich the knowledge to students, but also to EPR member. If ever it's uh, 
a hot uh, topic like this one because I think uh, everyone is concerned about this um, digitalization and uh, this uh, electronic uh, currencies. That's why we did open it, not just only for students, but also for other people who may be feeling like they are interested in. So as I mentioned it before, uh, your questions are welcomed during the session, but if ever you have a question during the session, we wrote it in, in the chat box. Uh, we will, the presenter will respond it, of course, after the, the presentation. And uh, after the presentation, if ever you had also another hot question, you may raise your hands. Uh, this uh, uh, Zoom has the, the option of raising hands. So I think uh, people will be raising their hands. So uh, without delaying, uh, let me welcome the Executive Director of IPR and Rwanda, uh, Mr. Seth Kuizera, uh, to welcome us during in this uh, public lecturing. So I may welcome you, sir, for a welcoming uh, speech. You are welcome. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, uh, Adrab. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's a pleasure being with you this afternoon with EPRN. Uh, I thank the organizing, organizing committee uh, for having selected this nice topic. Uh, actually, uh, the, if, if I start from digital, digital uh, economy, uh, we can see with the current situation with the COVID, most of things are moving from uh, AC, uh, actually physical to digital or online. So when discussing on impact of uh, electronic currency uh, on the economy, this is also aligned with the number of discussions which are going in there, uh, discussing on moving from the new, for the usual normal to the new normal. New normal means how the new ways of doing things. Now, when you move from online, you can see online trading of commodities, but also there are online payments, there are also electronic currencies. So this can have uh, like, um, you can see like people sitting at their home, making money, making money from internet, these Bitcoin things, cryptocurrencies. This is a new normal of the current world. So it's good we discuss on this topic which is actually timely because the current situation with COVID, with the pandemic, we realize people uh, can find themselves in a situation which is requiring them to work out of the, the usual offices or usual or boutiques or shops. So let's discuss in this. Everything which is new, of course, it has positive uh, side and negative side, what you call pros and cons. So it's good to have an experienced speaker this afternoon who will tell us about this topic. But I am really curious to know from him, but also from uh, all participants as we give comments. I agree with you. Some of them can say, yes, it's good. It, should, it shouldn't be banned because it can encourage maybe economy if, uh, in the current modern world. Others can say, no, we should ban it because it has some serious issues, mostly related to security. I think we had in the recent future some issues of uh, the frauds, frauds or misuse of this uh, actual platform or opportunity. So maybe others can say the country should strengthen control mechanisms or regulation mechanism, but encourage this electronic currency after you have the infrastructure which can hinder, which can fight those you know, fraud uh, activities then you can enhance uh, the use of Bitcoin and the other types of currencies. So mine was to just give you welcome on behalf of EPRN. We are always happy when we invite you to our sessions and we see you participating. So we want you participating not just to attend the meeting, but also giving ideas. You can attend the meeting, but you're not contributing to it. It's good we hear to speaker and the others, but it's good you share your views so that you can come up with a core understanding with a fruitful deliberations. With these few remarks, I wish you very, very nice deliberations. Thank you. Yeah, I would like to thank uh, the executive director of EPR in Rwanda, Mr. Seth Quizera. Thank you for your warm welcome. And uh, without delaying, I would like just to remind you who are we with today. Uh, the presenter of the day is called Christian Baba Zinahayo. He's uh, He's a well-known uh, man in terms of logistics. He's a domestic company 
which deals with regional and local transportation service for export and dealer in different logistics and trading. Uh, he's a chief operation in tabs in charge of daily company operations. So I think he's a well-placed person to, to discuss these topics as long as he's just um, dealing with this um, money circulation and uh, this uh, international uh, way of moving of money. So um, without delaying, I would like to welcome uh, Mr. Christian Ahayo uh, for the presentation, uh, but also reminding you, if people have a question, please don't hesitate to ask. Mainly, I would like to encourage people to write the question in the chat box. And uh, maybe after the presentation, if ever you have another hold, hold question, you may raise your hands and we give you the floor. So feel free to ask any question you feel like you want to ask. So, uh, Mr. Christian, you are welcome for the presentation. The floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm very happy to be with you here. And uh, it's a privilege because anyone or someone can need to, to participate in this and uh, don't get the, that opportunity. But uh, I thank the EPRN executive director and uh, the whole staff. And thank you also the colleagues, I can see them on, on the list. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, without delaying immediately, I can start with the presentation yeah uh, the topic is impact of electronic currency uh, the, the impact of electronic currency uh, on economy of the developing countries and the question is, should Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies be encouraged or banned? A uh, short bioprofessional is, uh, I'm an economist, a researcher, and a parent member with enthusiastic spirit in educational promotion. My career has grown through different organizations. We at Bank of Gali PLC, I oversaw the accounts management and fixed term deposits. Furthermore, I joined World Bank Group in Development Impact Evaluation for Agricultural Projects. I worked also at Tab Logistics, as uh, a job mentioned before, in international and local trade for transport and import exports. Now, currently, I'm at Cora Coaching Group Limited, where we do uh, training with the subsidiary company, which is Cora Coaching and Business Academy. We provide coaching and training with the aim of exceeding needs for efficient professional services in human capital development for individuals, organizations in Africa and around the world. I'm a holder of Bachelor and Master's in Science in Economics from University of Rwanda. The content is uh, small, but somehow uh, long, but uh, we're going to do the introduction, evolution of money, function of money, use of money, digital money, history of cryptocurrency, advantages and disadvantages of cryptocurrencies, technology in the economy, conclusion, recommendations, some quotes, and I will also give you some challenges and uh, you will see also the references. Introduction now. Uh, because you can see on the topic, there is uh, economy and developing countries. Now, I started by what is really economy? Economy comes from a Greek word, oikonomos, which means one who manages a household. At first, this origin might seem abnormal, but in fact, household and economies have much in common. A household faces many decisions. It must uh, decide which household members do which tasks and what each member receives in return. Example, who cooks the dinner at home or in the household? Who does the laundry? Who gets extra desserts at dinner? Who gets to drive the car? In short, a household must allocate its scarce resources like time, desserts, car mileage, etc. among its various members. 
taking into account each member's abilities, efforts, and desires. This has been uh, taken by Principle of Economics, written by Mark I think you know him in Principle of Economics modules. The world economic situation and prospects employs to delineate trends in various dimensions of world economy. Several aspects are assessed to classify the country's economy with different methodologies. Moreover, uh, that world economic situation prospects classifies all countries of the world into one or three uh, broad categories, either develop, developed economies, economies in transition, and developing economies. Some subgroups are defined based in either on great geographical location criteria or others, such as the subgroup of major developed economies, which is based of the membership of G7 or Group 7. But uh, on geographical regions for developing economies as, as follows, let's say let's Africa, East Asia, South Asia, Western Asia, and Latin America and Caribbean. For the other parts of the analysis, countries have been classified by their level of development as measured by per capita gross national income. I think here you can also remember it's not GDP or gross domestic product, it's just gross national pro uh, income. Accordingly, countries have been grouped as high income or upper middle income and low middle income and low income. And uh, here we can uh, classify every country or just by where this country can belong, depending on the economy. Uh, before we continue, uh, going back to the to the this introduction, it was just uh, an overview of uh, economy and developing countries because you can say in some in some developed countries, they do uh, electronic currency on high level or they don't do. It depends on the analysis or the research which has been done. Now, uh, going back to the evolution of money. Now, uh, the word money can mean many things. It is used with different connotation in our everyday speech. By one hand, if people say that a person has a lot of money, they usually mean that the person is wealthy. If you have money, if someone has money, they say, ah, oh, that person is rich, is wealthy because in terms of money, because he has a lot of money. By other hand, to the economists, money has a very specific meaning. They define money as anything that is generally accepted in payment for goods and services or in the repayment for debts. This has been taken in the book written by Mishkin. The payment system has been changing and evolving over centuries together with the form of money. A long time ago, gold served as the main form of money. Later, paper sets, paper assets, sorry, such as checks and currency were used as money also. The coins and the notes, which are used in most economies like today, are called the fiat money, which is the money that has no intrinsic value and declared to be a legal tender. Uh, a small, uh, a small presentation again. You remember that uh, in the butter economy or butter trade, uh, where the money has not, uh, uh, which we are having today, which has not been done, uh, uh, created or adopted. If someone would like to buy something, let's say I'm having cassavas and I want rice, I take some some amount of cassava, I go, I do an exchange. So uh, we, we, you can understand how it was hard in that time. But along the time, they try now to find what can this type of money or how can we do the payment, how can we do the exchange in, in uh, an easy way? When people only used gold as money, the economy was said to be a gold standard. The gold standard was common throughout the world during the late 19th century. 
Despite the advantages of metal money, these metals were still quite heavy and it was hard to transport bigger sums. Example, for large purchases, large purchases such as land or houses, and it was also easy to steal them. Assume now you are, you are going to buy something, let's say in uh, from one from one district to another district, and you need to buy like a land or you need to buy uh, something which is some requires a lot of money, and you have gold or something which are metal uh, uh, metal uh, uh, value. You will you will need to to get that transport. Even that transport fees also has to be exchanged by what? By the th those kind of metals. So it was very difficult in that time. That's why, uh, due to the above mentioned shortcomings, as we have seen before, this uh, to be heavy, to hard to transport, and which was also easy to steal. Uh, banks evolved in. That's uh, 16th and 17th century in England, just because of those problems which have been uh, arising in that time. Traders used to store their gold there and in return received a statement indicating how much they had deposited. This statement could be signed over the, to other persons when the traders wanted to buy something. If some traders have some amount of gold, they need to get something which written that uh, I have some gold here, some kilograms, I don't know, but uh, I have some amount of gold here. So this statement uh, uh, ensures that I have that one. And if I need to buy something, I can also use one of the statements to the buyers or to the sellers. As a result, paper currency, which are pieces of paper that function as medium exchange, develop now because of those, those, uh, those uh, uh, solutions, uh, it was very possible to say, ah, okay, if I, get, I have a paper of saying that I have a lot of gold there, so this can be now a proof of payment or uh, money itself, because if I have a paper, I have also that money. Uh, now, we, we can also look at functions of money. The money, normally serves uh, the main the main one we know the three main functions are as one as a medium of exchange where it is the item used to make transactions the second is as a unit of account where it provides the way to record prices and other economic values or store of a value where it offers a way to transfer purchasing power from the present to the future uh, this these three main functions we usually do this in every time, every our daily life. Like medium of exchange, if you're gonna want to pay or, or to buy, um, uh, let, let's say a meal or a dinner, you have to pay. That is a daily transaction. You have an account in any financial institution. You need also to put some money there. You want to to forecast for let's say time five years or I don't know that, that forecasting that future value it's in money also if you have let's say a land today and you buy it and you don't use it right now in the future you have that amount now you have money we have money what, what how do you use this money there is a non-person Keynesian, Keynes, in his Keynesian theory where he postulated that there are three motives describing what induces people to hold money. The first one was transactions motive. People hold money because it is a medium of exchange that can be used to carry out everyday transactions, which is contrary to the other assets, like example, example like a land, there are no transaction costs involved. For example, if a piece of land has to be sold in order to get cash quick, quickly, one might have to sell to settle for a lower price. The second one is precautionary motive. We have seen transactions motive. The second is precautionary motive. 
where people hold, also hold an additional amount of money as a precaution against an unexpected need. Example, a person might need some medicine immediately because he or she suddenly feels ill. And the last Keynesian motive is speculative motive, where he said that interest rates can play a role very big. As interest rate rises, the demand for money will fall. This means with rising interest rates, people will want to hold bonds rather than money. People are more likely to expect a higher return from bond holding a bond than from holding money. You know this sometimes the our central bank tell the general public that uh, bonds are available, you can buy shares like in the central banks or somewhere in the company which are listed or you can buy your bonds for I don't know 10, 10 5 years it depends on the policy which have been done. Now, before we go to the digital money, uh, we wanted to know and to understand uh, this uh, history of money, uh, the evolution of money, the function of money, and use of money. Now, we are going to digital, digital money. Currently, there are various approaches to set up and implement electronic payment system. To understand the evolution of electronic money, one has to take a look at the historical improvement in computer technologies, electronic commerce, for example. For a few years now, computers and networks have been widely used. In 1993, the aggressive expansion of internet started. And uh, you remember very well that in Rwanda, we started having the cell phone like uh, in 1989, 8, 98, And why electronic money is required? We need electronic money to ease the business. And the most widely used one is uh, credit card. Most of the time, if we do the electronic money, most of the people, they say, okay, they think about credit card. But we have also the card, which are debit card, there are prepaid card, and others. And what is e-money now? There are many different names which are currently used to specify electronic money. Some will say uh, e-money is digital cash, another digital money, or cyber coins, e-cash, digital code token, yeah, etc. Depends on how they have those information. Now, properties of e-money. The digital money can be absolutely anonymous. This means that customers have to have the freedom of usage and the bank is not able to identify their clients via their payments. In order to replace cash or traditional money as a standard of medium exchange, e-money must have equivalent characteristics of traditional money. For example, it must have a monetary value backed by cash. Furthermore, it must also have a global acceptance because you remember that uh, the, those coins, those notes, has a legal tender or had to be accepted on the certain level. Now, for the history of cryptocurrency, Bitcoin originated with a white paper that was published in 2008 under the pseudonym Satoshi Nakamoto. It was published via a mailing list of cryptography and has a similar appearance to uh, an academic paper. The creators of original uh, the creators original motivation behind Bitcoin was to develop a cash-like payment system that permitted electronic transaction, but that also included many of advantageous current characteristics of physical cash. Uh, in short. These Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies have been in introduced just to try to replace the existing one, these banknotes and coins, depending on the, those uh, founders, how they needed to do that. Here, there is cash transaction and electronic payment. In the above chart, you can find that the cash transaction, there is a buyer and there is a seller. On the left side, a buyer, before 
he or she get some goods, she has or he has to pay using the cash transaction. And once the seller has received the money, the seller will, uh, will give the goods to the buyer. That is the cash transaction. Now, on the bottom, electronic payment, there is a buyer also, there is a seller. But if you can see at the buyer, the buyer, there is control, as you remember on the keyboard, there's control and C. There is something, there are some code he's going to use or she's going to use the, uh, some code, some, uh, some internet banking, or there is just something which is electronic. So once the buyer has completed the electronic payment, the seller will also deliver the goods to the buyer. Now, the payment system with a central authority. I'm assuming that here everybody has an account in any financial institution. Now, we let's say that we are we are buyers and we need to buy some goods outside. We have to go to the bank if the amount is not uh, uh, is beyond or is exceeding the amount we can use on our ATM. We do. You 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 order or you prepare and send order to the bookkeeper. Here the bookkeeper is representing the bank or any financial institution, and you tell the bank or financial institution to do what to do that payment. And once this payment is accepted, the financial institution will do that. Will make a a transfer to the seller, and once the seller has received the amount of money equivalent to the good which she has to or she has to deliver to you, uh, she will or he will send the goods to the buyer, and that payment system via central authority is very completed very well. Now, to counteract the problem of double spending, classical electronic payment systems are based on a central authority that verifies the legitimacy of the payment and keeps track on the current state of ownership. In such system, uh, a central authority, usually a bank, manages the account of buyers and sellers. The buyer initiates a payment by submitting an order, and the central authority then ensures that the buyer has the necessary fund to adjust the account accordingly. You maybe have received some calls from your relationship uh, accounts manager or officer in your bank account, and they tell you, ah, you have some problem on your account, please do this so that we can make the transaction. And if it is not done, they cannot make it. Once you make everything fine, then it will be done. Here also, there is another part for payment system with a distributed ledger. Here there is a buyer and there is a seller. Before, remember how it was done before. But here, now there is something which is... Uh, different from the other side. Here there, are, there is communication. You can find one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven, say, seven persons who are involved in one transaction. But everybody here is connected via in, um, in a short or long way of communication or co Connected. Remember in operations research where they do minimum in the minimum, minimum in the maxima, in mani, minimum in the minimum, minimum in the maximum. Those minimax, minimin, mini maximin, and maximax. Those short way of uh, getting the result in different ways. It also can be found here. When a buyer made a purchase. This person told his or her neighbors that the product now belong to the seller. The neighbors then spread the news until finally all the residents have been informed about the change in the ownership. Through this communication, every resident had a specific idea of which unit of value belong to the which person at a, any point of in time. You can find that even let's say the this person on the bottom side. He is connected or she is connected to anyone until to the seller. If the buyer wants to buy something for, from the seller and he does not need or she does not need to use the other uh, system in no, no more way, 
they will use this kind of communication so that the information is spread and there is no problem. But is it really 100% uh, sure that uh, no one will disclose the information? Now, the transaction capabilities. Here, if an issue is what must be resolved is how transaction can be initiated if there is no central authority. You can see here that there is no central authority. And now the issue now will be how now transaction can be initiated if there is no central authority. In a classical banking system, if a client talks to his or her advisor or submit his or her payment in order to invite a bank's online service, the infrastructure provided to the commercial bank and other central service provider ensure that the transaction will be communicated for execution. But in the absence of the central authority, communicating a payment order in this traditional sense is not really possible because there is no intersection between the buyer and the, the seller. Now, you can see that the in the Bitcoin system, a payment order can be communicated to any number of network nodes. The network nodes are linked together in a loose network and forward the message until all nodes have been informed about the transactions. Let, uh, you can see this, uh, this uh, the chart below. There is edit, edit say that I transfer one Bitcoin unit to Daniel. And the information is passed to Tony. Tony is saying the same message to Marcia. And Tony again said the same to Michelle. Once the information Michelle got it without any problem, he or she will she will uh, pass also the information to Brian, as Marcia also did. And Michelle also will tell to Claudia, and Claudia will tell to Jake. So now you can see on the comment here that edit his message is repeated. The message, the original message from edit has been uh, transmitted without any problem but how 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 this person will respond we really they uh, try to communicate very well at this stage it is fine but one imagine now if one does not respond very well here we can see also some advantages and disadvantages of cryptocurrencies before we go there, let's uh, start here, do something here again. Uh, assume now Tony got the information from Edit and Tony transmits the message to Marcia and uh, Michelle. And these two persons refused to get to, to transmit the message. It will mean that Jake will not get that information, even Brian, even Claudia. Because the two person or the the first message is this one, the second, the pass the second persons, Marsha and Michelle, did not transmit the message. And here it will be definitely uh, broke the that chain. On the green part, there are advantages of cryptocurrencies. One is crypto assets. Bitcoin itself could, over time, assume a similar role as gold. The second one is colored coin uh, is promised of payment that is linked to Bitcoin transactions. Smart contract. Smart contracts are also self-executing contracts, however, not mandatory. Data integrity, another application for public blockchain, is that potential to monitor data files. Going back to crypto assets, if you have the that amount of bitcoins or I don't know the because there are, there are different types of cryptocurrencies if you have that amount as we said that before before the the introduction of paper assets if someone has a lot of gold he has some assets also if also the person has a, a more crypto it's just an asset because it's already in value of money. The current coins, it's just about also the payment. Some businesses or some countries, they use uh, 
Bitcoin as term as medium of a payment. If you have one, let's say on Bitcoin, here we don't have the this uh, value. It's just an overview of how this can be working or cannot be working. If you have a Bitcoin, you can also do what you can pay because on in the environment where they have, they can also do what they can using it to pay. The smart contract. Why smart contract? It because it is very easy and no need of uh, body resolutions, no need of a uh, lot of protocol. If you are the one to say yes, it's fine. Yeah, you do that. And they, but uh, it is not also mandatory to do that because you are the one to decide yes or no. About data integrity also, uh, it's that um, as you are the only person who have this information, what you have, it's just only one person who have it, unless you disclose to your one of the friends or someone else. This is the part of advantages. But on the right part, there is disadvantages, the folks. It can happen, and in fact it has happened, that a blockchain split because various groups cannot agree about the modification. As I said before, for Misha and, uh, and Michelle, if the two persons decide to not, even one person decide to not uh, transmit the message, it will immediately block that continuity of the information. Energy wastage. Proof of work mining is expensive and it uses a great deal of energy and the situation is not clear. Uh, for the Bitcoin also, as you can understand, that's uh, something which uh, in the mining, they, they will be using mining and uh, it will also require a lot of information, a lot of work, a lot of uh, waste. So this kind of energy wasting also, it's an advantage to that one. The Bitcoin price volatility, the price of Bitcoin is highly volatile and the price of Bitcoin also depends on an aggregate demand. You remember the supply theory and demand theory, once there is um, forces demand and supply, this also can apply because once the price is high, it can lead to the low lowering the that quantity demanded and it is difficult to know the price st stability of this bitcoin and the other disadvantage is that trusts risk and uncertainties are very high than existing one because if i'm asking some person or someone to do this and we do this transaction online and because I just trust him or I trust her and assume now this trust is broken I don't have someone to to go and say ah please I have this I have given some amount of money to this person it will be difficult to get someone because we remember that there is no intersection there is no regulator between I the buyer and the seller now technology in the economy as we continue to see that impact of electronic currency on the economy of developing countries. Let's go back again on economic growth. Economic growth is the process whereby the country's real national and per capita income increases over a longer period of time. Just in short, increase of production in terms of quantity. And economic development is a sustained improvement in material well-being of society. Or increase of production in terms of quantity and quality. That quantity which has been uh, increased now will be transformed so that we can go to get the quality. In the world way, each country aspires to have a long run improved standard of living of its society. Nowadays, technology plays a crucial role in either economic growth or economic development in each country. Whether the country is uh, doing economic growth very good or economic development very good, the technology will play a role, a crucial one. However, the technology needs a lot of consistent investment with high level of security. Uh, you remember that uh, our ED has mentioned above in the welcome remark that uh, 
this that security is very well needed there was a study of key of six key countries from different sub regions of africa to illustrate how digital technology uptake would help each one advance ahead in economic development furthermore africa is closely watched as the next big growth market a description that has persisted for a while there are many reasons for optimism that this can be happen just let's say three examples one is that in africa there are youngest population in the world compared to the other continents the second one is that major consumption markets also and increasingly mobile phone has been enabled in 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 africa uh, these three example or these three points are on the high level than others that's why also in africa we can have that digital te technology which can play a big role more than others an emerging digital ecosystem is particularly crucial as multiplier of debt growth because access to smartphones and other devices enhance consumer information networking or job creating resources and even financial inclusion that was a, a an article which has been done by Baskar and Shankar in 2019 about how technology could promote growth in six African countries. I remember when I was doing an agricultural project that uh, in China, once the introduction of mobile phone has been adopted, it has multiplied three times the production because the the information can be easily transmitted from the one who is doing agriculture and the market. You can see also here the same. I can show you also this chart where those six uh, countries are. One is Egypt, another is Ethiopia, Kenya, Rwanda, Nigeria, and South Africa. You can look at this, uh, this line with the different colors. Each country has its, uh, its uh, line with the with colors. The other one, the, the, at the extent, you will find a line of, let's say, the, of dots, which shows the benchmark. This point, the above, above one, it's about digital evolution and index in 2017 score. You can find now each country how at which level about uh, the interval between the its situation or its status comparing to the benchmark you can see also the digital evolution index 20 sorry 17 momentum this is about how it is rapid to do that one you can see also digital money score you can find here that uh, the big one is about kenya comparing to the others you can see the high skilled digital jobs. You can find that the one which is very high is uh, South Africa. You can see also the medium and skilled digital jobs, still South Africa. You can find again here the low skilled digital jobs, again still South Africa here. Basic infrastructure, governance. You can see also now Rwanda, Rwanda is in green, is the second after South Africa in governance in digital uh, application. Now, and there's also online freedoms, that again, this is the South Africa which is on the top. This is the technology in certain countries in, in the economy, either uh, using the different situations of the country because we, we are not on the same on the same level in the economy. Conclusion now, the Bitcoin creator's intention was to develop a decentralized cash-like electronic payment system. In this process, they faced a fundamental challenge on, of how to establish and transfer digital property rights of a monetary unit without a central authority. This was the, their objective. We don't need central authority now. Let's do our business. 
the Bitcoin blockchain also has been introduced as a solution because of the other one. This new technology allows the users to store and transfer their money without the need for a central authority like cashing hands. But also, the price volatility and scaling issues frequently raises concerns about suitability of Bitcoin as payment instruments. Uh, once it has been uh, training uh, in, in Rwanda, the central bank uh, gave us the, for, to the general public a notice. Reference is made to the notice to the general public dated on 30th May 2019. In its third and fourth paragraphs, the bank reminded the general public that it is illegal and there is a high probability to lose their money. As the primary objective of the central bank's monetary policy is to ensure the price stability and contributing to sustained macroeconomic stability. And banks stated that it will not safeguard any person who invests in that business. You know that uh, in microeconomics, advanced microeconomics, there is a chapter of uh, uh, risks and uncertainties. I see the question from Rosette, we'll do that. Yes, uh, the risk and uncertainties, it's a very big issue. And we know that there are three types of risks. There are risk takers, the risk averters, and risk neutral. For this one, in one, you can take risk and you say that yeah, it is possible now, let me do that. But as if now you don't, get uh, uh, your return as expected, it will be difficult to, to come back or to, 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 to apply that error correction model using on the shock which you have been uh, experiencing. Uh, I have some quotes uh, what, uh, that I need to share with you. In Adam Smith's uh, document or the wealth, the wealth of the nations, which has been really known all over the world, say that be, uh, not being not as a bag of gold silver, he said that the abundance, that wealth of the nation is not really a bag of gold and silver, but it's an abundance of all necessaries and conveniences of life which annually consumes. That country does not really need a lot of gold and silver, but the necessaries, those necessities for the person, for the, for the resident is really uh, attained at a certain level. But Robert Solo, in his solo model, saying that GDP also is produced according to aggregate of production function and technology with respect to the modeling changes over time in output and input. He stated that uh, the technology is very good, you know, those factors of production. But using now the technology, it will multiply the productivity of any one of the factors of production. Now, we all desire to have best standard of living. And we need money to satisfy some of the needs we have. Among these two persons or two consumers, who is the right between consumer X and consumer Y? Consumer X is saying that I prefer savings than loan. And consumer two or consumer Y says I prefer loans than savings. Yeah, uh, this those either loan or savings will come also from money. If I want money, I want to get a lot of money using the Bitcoin because it can generate a lot of income, can generate a lot of revenues, but really what will be the risk of that in that investment? And now some people say, okay, let's say, let, because we don't have the that information about it, let me go to the bank and ask for loans. Loan for what? What your project are you doing? Is it doing for upstream or downstream? Can you can you, 
that amount you need is you need that amount just before the project or after the project yep uh, here are the references which have been used but uh, before I say I close this presentation let me go back just a little bit and recap and tell you what we did it was about the evolution of money, the function of money, use of money, digital money, history of cryptocurrency, its advantages and disadvantages, technology in economy, and what is the conclusion and the recommendations. In, in short, the cryptocurrency and uh, this digital money is about having a transaction without any without any uh, intersection or anyone to, to be between the buyer and seller. And this is one of the, uh, which can, this is one of the main reason for cryptocurrency, but it can be possible. But if you lose, if you don't get someone to assist you or to, 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 to hold that trust, the investor or the buyer may lose uh, at a big extent so thank you very much and uh, it was just just a presentation we can also discuss on this topic thank you very much yeah um thank you very much uh, christian for this uh, wonderful presentation i think it was uh, very resourceful and um, i know people have been gaining more knowledge or it also triggered their way of thinking uh, and uh, as I've been seeing it, it was an interesting um, uh, theme. Uh, I, I didn't so much question in, 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 in the chat box, but um, uh, we just got this one question. Maybe the others will raise their hands. They have maybe preferred to use uh, their voice while asking their questions. Um, there is Rosette. She asked, uh, what could uh, think it means East Africa or electronic currency, I don't know. Could currency help on the regional economic development? And uh, the second question, it's mine, by the way, even though I was facilitating, uh, I've been a little bit uh, asking myself, while you were presenting about the disadvantages, you did mention uh, risk and uncertainties are higher than the existed one. And this uh, had pulled me to this question, it has A and B. Uh, as long as this uh, digital money is is not really controlled by governments, mainly in these um, developing countries, uh, wouldn't it be a hinder to the tax paying? Because when there is a circulation of money in the country, there are also the tax which is being paid according to the transaction which is made. So if ever these uh, cryptocurrencies um, are, are promoted. Don't you see it as a, a hinder to the tax paying in some countries? Another uh, question is, at what level do you think there could be a black market uh, regarding uh, these uh, uh, cryptocurrencies as long as it will be the online money? So uh, I think let's take another question from Tersi Nyabagabo. Uh, Please, Tersi, can you unmute yourself and ask um, your question? I'm saying if Tersi, can you unmute yourself and ask a question? Thank you very much. Uh, good evening. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Yes, thank you very much for the presentation. I also have a question uh, uh, as well. So uh, the, the process uh, towards uh, cryptocurrency will not be a shock treatment. Uh, it will be a gradual process, uh, like in El Salvador, where countries will still retain the traditional currency and uh, use crypto as well. So I'm wondering uh, if 
we entered this system of dual currencies. On the one hand, having the traditional currency, on the other using Bitcoin. So given the fact that monetary policy or other authorities will still have an impact on uh, the traditional currency. And so let's say that uh, the monetary policy uh, prints too much money, which devalues the traditional currency. It will distort the floating exchange rate uh, of the traditional currency relative to cryptocurrency. And so it will be more expensive for regular citizens, ordinary citizens, I guess, to get crypto because their traditional currency has been devalued. So how much do you think that that will actually be an impact or that will actually bear consequences to uh, the people's ability to access these modes of payment, given that they will still retain at first uh, their traditional currencies that will still be uh, controlled by uh, monetary authorities? But thank you. I think we may go with um, these uh, questions, and uh, maybe we will continue after the, the res after responding this one. Uh, thank you. Can we get a clarification about Rosette? What called is East Africa? Can you do East Africa currency? If she's still there, she can tell us uh, really the EA stand for what? Rosette. Would Rosette please uh, unmute herself and tell us what she was meaning by EA? Rosette, she, she's not there. I think you may continue with others. Okay, Maybe yeah. Come back after. Okay. Uh, let's say that if. The EA is about East African community currency. What could East African currency help on the regional economic development? Uh, I think this, uh, because we can, we can look at the, the currencies we have in East Africa. They are not on the same, uh, on the same level, because if we can say that one, one Ghanaian France compared to one Burundian or Burundian France or Tanzanian shilling or Kenyan shillings or Uganda, they need, they have to get a, a clear picture on that money so that they can have the same currency, which will be acceptable on the, all the uh, countries. So this, any change, every change will always will always affect the the existing situation. But uh, if the policies are well established, it will be fine, and they can do that. But uh, the reason why, as Jesse uh, mentioned about it, the reason why is still delaying or is not yet approved. It's because they are still learning about it. How can we have a common currency so that we can also do? Uh, the, we do the the the, the, the common one. Uh, for for yes, Aja, for you. Uh, two questions about taxes. Yes. Uh, this, as we say that the trust and the risks and uncertainties are higher than existing one. It's because there in cryptocurrency. They are only just cryptographies and the nodes and the, the level of the uh, using the, let's say, if you have been doing some data analysis, if you get, if you don't know, know about the reading the, the do file, let's say, in Stata, if someone gives you the, that do file, you cannot read it unless you know what is in that that reading system. Here also, for the taxes, for the taxes, once the money or the, those person they are having a lot of money in the their country, immediately it, they will raise. There will be an issue of um, inflation, even the hyperinflation, because of some person they have a lot of money and it, and it is not really controlled by the central. Uh, Authority, this will bring a bring a, a big issue. And you remember that uh, even in some banks, they say there is uh, 
a department of compliance where they say we need to know really uh, the source of this fund and why it is going to be used just to to allow the follow up of money laundering and and or anti money laundering and anti counter terrorism because if there is a lot of money and you don't know really the who is funding that amount it will be a, 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 an issue and that's why also on the side of uh, the cryptocurrencies on the disadvantages it is very difficult and very high and this is why uh, this is why it is uh, even the central bank is saying please don't do that we have a lot of uh, investment you can do bonds you can do in term deposit you can do shares in the existing banks or uh, companies which are listed so please make sure that what you are doing it's uh, trustworthy and if you lose it will be your side so the in the black market also because if there is a clear picture there is any with everything it's coded or everything is in the black side how can now be aware about this is very correct or not if i can i can go also to the uh, question for Tessy. yes i agree with you that's why we are still uh, delaying to accept this because we don't really know what what is uh, how it will work and it is not really accepted for everybody even you can understand that the level of technology in or it in in the country depending either in rwanda or outside we don't we are not on the same level of it some companies or some some countries can have a uh, an advanced one and others are still going uh, on the certain level so i understand and i accept that this the process for cryptocurrency uh, for uh, uh, accepting these cryptocurrency currencies is uh, very has to be uh, has to be well well managed and uh, the officials or the those senior officials can tell us now we can do that because we see that uh, this Bitcoin cannot and uh, cannot uh, cannot affect our economy because of the rules which will now be uh, uh, will, will now be um, implemented. But currently, because if you have that one, you do on your side, and you don't need to to tell someone that you have that one. And remember, if you are losing, no one will support you. No lawyer, no no court will go to say ah, i have done this please help me to do that yep thank you i'm i'm seeing someone called silver has raised his hand so silver can you unmute yourself please and ask a question please you're welcome thank you so much for nice presentation and uh, of course we get something from this presentation so my question is uh, is there linkages between uh, cryptocurrencies and the cashless economy that government Rwanda is promoting. I'm wondering whether there is a, a linkage between cashless economy and the cryptocurrency. Uh, of course, as you know, Rwanda is promoting cashless economy. So I, I would like to ask whether there is a linkage between two, between cryptocurrency and the cashless economy. Thank you. Yes, uh, uh, Ajab, can we take another question so they can do the same or we can this one right now? I think um, if there is someone else with a question, may raise his hand or write in chat box, please. I see there is no one else. Um, I think you can you can respond that because no one else did raise the hand. Yeah, yes, thank you. Uh, thank you, Silva. Uh, this is interesting really question because uh, some person can or some person can can uh, confuse the digital currency and cash cashless economy. In cashless economy, what we need is just to reduce the this banknote and these bank coins because there is a lot of amount amount which is invested on that one that's why the 
That's why the bank says that uh, please uh, use the commercial banks, use the financial institutions. There is uh, among the references I've been using for this presentation. There is where I read, I read, I read that in Rwanda, in each five kilometers, there is each, every financial institution, either Sako, Umurenge, or uh, bank, commercial bank, or something. Just all of them will assist you or assist everybody to don't use really the amounts in cash. And remember, uh, if we can also relate to the that issue of the the gold, it was difficult, and it is also difficult to take that amount. I assume you are going in the bank and you are going to take twenty million and you go outside and uh, they can steal you the 20 million but if you go to the bank and you make an order as you have seen before here on the uh, central authority like this you go to the bank and you write an order or something and they make it internet banking also in lot uh, most banks they are using it you don't need to go and say uh, please take this 20 million or any amount of money so that you can do that like currently there is a limitation from the central bank to the banks, commercial banks, that uh, no one is allowed to take more than five million. It, it is just because uh, the more you take money in the banks or outside, you can lose, you can have any issue on, on that one. And that's for the bank uh, system. You know now the mobile money. You can use your mobile money to pay. We have done another research article previously that uh, even the central bank recently have published that how the, the, the population has improved of doing or taking the this uh, cashless economy measures from a certain level to the upper level. So for cashless, it's about leaving that money, but using the digital system but which are controlled because if you are using mobile money or mobile banking or any financial institution you will be having that that track in cashless economy you will be having a track that you have done some transaction but in cryptocurrency remember that there is no there is no need of uh, central authority and that is the only problem, as you can see. There is no central authority in cryptocurrency. And this is a very, very big issue for those transactions. In short, in cashless economy, we don't need to hold the coins and, uh, and banknotes. But we use the allowed system of your payment or transacting, but controlled by any financial institution which is allowed at the country level. But in digital currency, that's uh, cryptocurrency and Bitcoin, currently it is not allowed because of no tracking system and you cannot find how you can uh, solve an issue which has been raised. Thank you. Um, thank you very much uh, for answering the question. I don't know if there is someone else uh, who maybe have an addition or a question. Sometimes people do think that the only question are allowed. And uh, if ever there's someone with another addition or something to add on, please welcome. Even the comments. Even the comments. Yeah, output, yeah. highlights. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Rosette asked uh, a question in the chat box asking I can see. why Bitcoin is worth. Like, I don't know if he's, he's, uh, he's asking about the, the, the it, it, it exchange or maybe, Rosette, can you please uh, clarify the question for us to be able to, to go for an answer maybe? Okay. 
there's no problem. Do you get the question? Maybe Christian is asking why. Uh, I can, I, if I can understand well, the question is why Bitcoin is worth. Uh, uh, let me stop share and give you the. And show you the. You can see that notice from the central bank. It was written on 30th uh, May 2019. On the first paragraph, whether well, the National Bank of Rwanda has been alerted of the existence of investment scam activities operating in Rwanda through locally registered businesses or from abroad through online platforms. These scams take the form of active pyramid scheme, multiple level marketing or cryptocurrency issuance through fake initial coins offering crypto scam. Example of such scheme uh, that have come to attention of the binary include supermarkets, supermarketing global, LTD, three friends, friend, three friends system, group limited, one coin and quaco, that's one. But in short, it was, they tell some people that if you do this, if you come to invest or you buy a Bitcoin, you will be having a lot of money. And because of the, 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 the person who invested it or who has done that one, he used that the money because he, he, did, he wanted to get a, a big capital. And once you come, he does not want to lose. The investor cannot lose because of the the other person who are just secondary and they tell you please if you do this you will you will gain three or five times and now imagine we if you have invested in the if you have invested in the in any business and you get 300 percent of the of, of the 300 percent of that inv that investment how 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 that investment is even the banks also you're going to ask a loan they give you not better than 20 percent if you do some term deposit you don't get even more than 15 percent and you are now going to do a, a, an investment and they tell you that if you invest 100 let's say 100 thousand you'll get 400 thousand in four months how it is difficult so that's why also uh, the one who tell you please come and join is just to tell you that it is possible and you can get a lot of money but it is very uh it, it, there is no model there is no economic model to say this variable one two three will affect this positively that's why uh, uh once you can get it you can be like tell you you can become a billionaire but uh at which extent it is difficult to understand. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. I can see also some some chats. And yeah. I would like to hear more on the potential impact of virtual currencies on financial systems. And what is your advice to youth who are struggling with unemployment? Thank you. Uh, if I can start by potential impact of virtual currencies on financial systems. Firstly, the central bank is the bank of the states and it is the bank of the banks. It means that the central bank in the country is the one which regulates everything for monetary policy. Now, the commercial banks and financial institutions, they have some reserves in the central bank just to make sure that once there is any bankruptcy or something happening in the 
the commercial banks, those clients who have deposited some certain amount on in their financial institutions will be uh, guaranteed that they will not lose a lot of money. Now, the virtual currencies it is not are not controlled by central banks, and that's why they say, okay, please, it's an advice from those persons or because we remember that it's pseudonym and that pseudonym is about it is anonymous. He or she is not known. Even the Satoshi, Satoshi Naka, uh, let's see, where is the Satoshi Nakamoto? Uh, th this name, this name is not his real name. It's just to tell the person that there is a person who is that one. Imagine, is it, uh, is he, is, uh, is Satoshi Nakamoto a person or a company? We don't really know. And how, how as uh, persons are we aware or at which level we are using the the nodes or the cryptocurrency the cryptographies or the coding system we don't really have enough information so that if I'm, i tell you the the information in the coding system can encrypt it and know that information so uh, i can advise uh, that the impact of these virtual currencies on financial institutions is that firstly it is not regulated by the central bank even any central authority and once you have money imagine now you are having let's say that you got an opportunity and you got that bitcoin and you are you are you you become a rich man or a rich person there is a person who is called Pareto. This time you will be in Pareto efficiency, where you will be having a lot of money, and but you're not, it's Pareto, but not stable. You need to be Pareto, but and stability. You will be Pareto, but non-stable. Because of what? You have a lot of money, and you don't, now you are having uh, issues of how you will survive with this, that money. Because you have to make some taxes and imagine you are paying the taxes as a person more than some companies big companies you have to explain where you are getting that money from those issues of uh, money laundering will be raised those you can you can even uh, invest in uh, an illegal uh, businesses so uh, it's really needed to to know why the cryptocurrencies have to be uh, studied rigorously so that the financial institutions understand them. For the second one is, what is your advice to youth who are struggling with unemployment? For unemployment, uh, uh, going back to advanced macroeconomics, there are two major issues in the worldwide in the worldwide not in rwanda or in south africa or in us it's just in the worldwide the two main one is one is unemployment and another is inflation inflation and unemployment are very big issues in the world that's why you have the for for the for inflation that's why you need the central bank to stabilize that inflation you at the time understand ah, the central bank has raised has has uh, remained its central bank rate at 4.5 percent just to understand that some banks now can give the loan to the their clients now for the for employment and unemployment it will be also another issue now the youth of today we are facing issue of unemployment because of what one uh jobs uh, or opportunities in general are somehow less and uh, we know that there is an issue of access to finance and sometimes some people can get money but they don't really know what to produce or they imitate others and there is no sustainable plan they have or we have but it is possible that if we really understand we try to understand what really do i need to do 
Most of the time we understand that some people want to go to study because others have gone to study. I'm going to do a master or some co some certification or some certifications of uh, in terms of uh, 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 in terms of uh, special courses because my friend or my parents are telling me to go and do that. And you will see that at a certain level we will be having a lot of graduates, but the unemployment is still high. One is that let's try to now understand that even one single francs, if you are adding and still adding, you will get another something. That was my last challenge, a question, that if we try to save, we can get something. And in unemployment, there are a lot of types of unemployment. I can understand that I'm underemployed because of what? Because I don't have the, I don't, uh, I'm not in the right position because of what? Because of my, my capabilities, my aptitude. But if I'm on the equivalent of my capabilities, I can do that. And others say, okay, because I'm a bachelor holder in either in economics or in finance or in accounting, I cannot do that uh, sitting at a reception and uh, accepting thing. But if you don't do that, if you don't do accept those amounts of, on the salary, now you are still consuming. And in consumption theory, remember that there is an autonomous consumption. You are still under autonomous consumption instead of adding that, that disposable in income. And you will not, we will not live in the same situation because of the, we are still having someone to help us. For unemployment, yes, the issue is worldwide, but the first thing is to understand, can I accept at least even the, the small money, just the small, and I save the small, and at a certain time, I will get something. Yeah. Uh, Thank you a lot. This was good. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I think uh, uh, I tried to, 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 to give some, some, some answer, small answers. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, I, I think um, if there is no any other question, we may welcome people who have comments or maybe I don't know appreciation, kind of things. And uh, if ever there is no one, um, on the behalf of EPRN and the executive director who was not uh, able to finish with us because uh, he had another meeting to attend, we would like to thank everyone who did participate in this uh, uh, public lecturing. And uh, we hope that uh, the next time that we'll invite you to other uh, public lecturing, you will be uh, responsive to our, our calls. And also could, would like to thank Christian Babazi for your time and this uh, wonderful presentation, which uh, was full of knowledge and wisdom. And I think um, people enjoyed the, really uh, this, uh, this, this session. So um, I, I think the next time maybe when we invite, uh, you, of course you will be, according to your time, you will be available. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Irene. Yeah, so uh, thank you very much. Uh, let us, let's call it a day. And uh, I hope that we'll see uh, together the next time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.